Armour 2 Daisy. Many of you will know exactly what this game is. It was a mod that accelerated a genre and arguably birthed a whole new one. From copycats to genre defined ones, this is the story of Daisy Mod, a game that went on to inspire many gamers and other well known video game titles today. Daisy Mod was created by a man called Dean Hall, also known as Rocket. The mod was initially released on the 13th of April 2012. Zombie games around this time were plentiful, but Daisy was very different. It was a massive open world zombie game where survival was the main objective. However, the zombies were not the main thing to be afraid of, it was other players. It was the first real game where players could live out that fantasy of being in a zombie apocalypse. At the time, The Walking Dead was huge and some would argue it was peak television. But sometimes watching it was not enough. Viewers wished they could live out this fantasy and create their own story. How would you survive a zombie apocalypse? Would you be evil? Would you be a hero? No. Things are different now. Or would you hide from everyone and be a lone wolf? With Daisy, it was possible to live out this fantasy. When I was in school, I would come home and play on my Xbox without a clue of this game's existence. Back in 2012, I was playing games like Black Ops 2 and Battlefield 3. But in the background of all of this, my older brother would have been on his PC playing Daisy, a game at the time I couldn't believe was real. Sure, I have played many zombie games before like Left 4 Dead and Dead Rising, but Daisy was different. It was a game that I have always dreamed about, a game with a massive open world full of zombies and other players. A game where I could live out that, what would I do in a zombie apocalypse fantasy? I unfortunately wasn't able to play it because it was my brother's PC and I was stuck with my Xbox. So if I couldn't play Armour 2 DayZ, then what was the next best thing? Watching people play it on YouTube of course. But the one guy that stuck out the most for me was Frankie on PC in 1080p. His gameplay always felt like I was watching a web series. He put a lot of effort into producing a story with his content. Frankie's playstyle was different. He wasn't this guy who would run around and shoot on sight. He was patient, strategic and calm. There's been countless times where he would stop a player and tell them to drop their weapon instead of straight up killing them. Hey buddy, how's it going? You need to stop moving. And drop your Lee Enfield and then we can be friends. Okay? You friendly? Can you type in side chat to me? I'm not gonna shoot you. Oh, you're, you're Lazar Death. Okay, cool. You were just looting in there. And this created many memorable moments in his videos. I also used to love how each video was like a small part of a story that connected together. Like I said, it was like a series. It gave you something to remember and something to look forward to. I don't think I can recall of any other YouTuber that got me excited for another one of their uploads. And this is what set him apart from everyone else. Frankie's gameplay was unique. It wasn't just your typical video where they would run around and play the game like a normal person would. Frankie planned his videos to make a coherent story, which I'm sure was not easy at the time because other players could have potentially ruined his gameplay. Frankie would also collaborate with other content creators and they would team up. I'm of course talking about Jack Frags, a now very successful creator. Frankie and Jack were at the time an iconic duo in the Daisy community and in the YouTube space. Over time, Frankie and Jack would eventually stop playing together for unknown reasons. Frankie did eventually however start playing with Sada, who was at the time another big Daisy content creator. And the content was still top notch. Frankie always stuck to his roots no matter who he was playing with. Most people probably know about this duo more than the old Frankie and Jack duo, but both of them still produce very memorable content. Frankie created a Daisy series that was loved by many, and he went on to inspire millions of people to play Daisy. Frankie and Daisy was such a massive influence at the time that it inspired thousands, if not millions of people to get into PC gaming, and I was certainly one of them. One day, my older brother went off to be an adult and he went to secure his future at university and left behind his old dusty PC for me. I still remember the specs. It was an old i5-650 CPU paired with a GTS 450 graphics card. Daisy was pretty much unplayable depending on what server I joined, but it never really mattered to me. I was still having fun. With that PC, I tried making my own videos similar to Frankie because he inspired me, but it never worked out. Fraps just tanked my FPS and turned my PC into a jet engine. Anyway, let's get back to talking about the game. Over time, Armour 2 Daisy received many different mods that offered different styles of gameplay. If you wanted to play Daisy but wanted to be able to build your own base, then Daisy Epoch was the way to go. 
Epochs introduced a new mechanic to the game which was really refreshing and exciting at the time, which was the ability to build bases. Base building only improved that zombie apocalypse fantasy that players have been longing for, because now they can go and reinforce one of the many buildings or build a new building completely. Players can also gather materials which can be used to raid other players bases for all their loot. It created an entirely new gameplay loop for the mod and it only made the game a whole lot better. The biggest and most popular mod in the game was Overpotch, which was a combination of two different mods, that being Overwatch and Epoch. This mod offered the players tons of new weapons, vehicles and of course the base building mechanic. Many players would argue that Overpotch was the best way to play Armor 2 Daisy as it was mainly focused on the best part of the game and that was PvP. However, some disagreed as the intense survival aspect of the game wasn't really there anymore as there were weapons and ammo everywhere. The anxiety of not being able to arm yourself wasn't really there anymore and the overall gameplay was much easier. Epoch offered a more hardcore experience as weapons, food and resources were much harder to find, raising the stakes of the gameplay much more. Over time, many people would argue that Overpotch kind of killed the charm that Daisy mod was known for, which was a hardcore experience that was full of intense moments and your character's life meant much more. Overpotch completely removed a lot of that and mainly focused on an easier experience so that players could focus on faster paced PvP. There is just one more mod I wanted to cover, as this mod went on to influence one of the biggest games made at one point. I'm of course talking about the Battle Royale mode for DayZ, created by Brendan Green, also known as Player Unknown. Brendan Green loved the overall idea of Daisy, but wanted an experience that was more compressed. Him and his buddy created their own server where loot was more present. He did this because he wanted to arm players as soon as possible so that they can go and hunt for other players, which he thought was the best part of Daisy. This led him and his friend to create their own mod for Daisy, which was the Battle Royale mod, which went on to being one of the most popular mods in the game. Brendan eventually moved on to Armor 3 and created his own Battle Royale mode there called Player Unknown's Battle Royale. Brendan Green essentially pioneered the Battle Royale mode in gaming and his influence was astronomical and this is all because of DayZ. During the heights of the mod, there was another game studio creating the next big game in the genre. It was a massive multiplayer open world zombie survival game that was promising some features that would rival DayZ upon its release, such as massive maps that were up to 400km big, private servers which could be rented by players directly from the game itself, a skill tree which the players can earn points for by killing players and zombies, and a hardcore mode. This game is of course the infamous War Z, also known as Infestation Survivor Stories. A game that was heavily inspired by DayZ and full of promises which they failed to deliver upon release. This game really riled up the open world survival game community because of the many controversies that surrounded it. Many YouTubers made several videos covering the blatant lies from the dev team and just the overall shadiness of the company. Overall, The War Z was just a horrible game that was obviously trying to cash in on the hype of DayZ but failed miserably and Hammerpoint Interactive, the team behind this game, essentially destroyed their reputation for the foreseeable future and all of their future projects were immediately written off because of The War Z. Over time, the game did receive many updates to improve the game and the game actually kind of built a cult following of dedicated players who generally enjoyed the game and the game's primary feature, which was the game's PvP. Some well-known streamers started their career on this game, such as Summit 1G and Dakotas, who were actually very entertaining to watch. Amidst all of the drama surrounding the War Z and Daisy's continuous rise of players, there was one more competitor on the horizon, a game that was heavily inspired by DayZ. This is Rust, created by Gary Newman, the creator of Gary's Mod. This is what the very first version of Rust looks like, it was a simpler spin on the genre that offered the players features similar to what you would find in the DayZ mod, such as PvP, base building, zombies, and so on. Rust took inspiration from a lot of the features from current mods in DayZ, such as Epoch's base building. They took the formula and massively improved upon it, creating a much simpler and easier system. This version of Rust is loved by many. I have a soft spot for this game, as this was the first game for me that made me completely switch from console to PC. This version of Rust gave me so many amazing memories, like the time where I met a completely random group of strangers and we formed a group of four people. We would stay up all night talking on Skype while raiding other people's bases. Within the month, we went from four people to over 10. I still remember the ridiculous clan name someone came up with in our group, 69 Clan. I remember those stupid late nights of terrorizing other clans and servers. Those were the days. Rust Legacy was a very simple game full of charm, but this version of Rust didn't last, as Gary's vision of the game was not fulfilled, as the current version had engine limitations. 
The version of Rust that we know now is much closer to what Gary imagined. I don't know much about this version of the game as I don't play it, but I've seen many people say that 2015-2016 Rust were the best years for the game. Daisy's influence was spreading everywhere and everyone knew about it. The genre was only really present on PC and console had nothing like it. It was a completely untapped market, until one day a small game popped up on the Xbox Live Indie Store and this game was set to rival every game I just mentioned. This is Apoxy, a game created by Sick Creations and was released in 2014 for $1 or 69 pence at the time. This game had it all, PDP, zombies, cars and looting. I played this game when it came out and I just remember laughing the whole time. Even Frankie was aware of this game as he made a video of him playing it. The game was just pure jank but honestly I think that's what made it fun and to be honest what was you expecting for $1? When me and my friend were playing this game at the time I quickly found a bug which made no sense to me. If you slightly turned your camera for some reason it made you run faster, almost as fast as a car. So that's Apoc Z, a hilarious take on the genre that I'm sure a lot of players from Xbox remember. All of these games happened in the span of almost two years. DayZ was a monumental success and it cemented itself as one of the greatest survival games ever made. It was the first to do it and everyone wanted a piece of the genre. Then came along the War Z, which was a blank cash grab that failed to deliver on all their promises on release. Rust was another game that came out during DayZ's era and I think Gary Newman and Facepunch Studios did an amazing job. It really was a in the right place at the right time moment for them. They released Rust at the perfect time and is now known as one of the most successful survival games ever made, which still has thousands of players play until this day. People really made a name for themselves in the Daisy modding scene and went on to becoming very successful. After Daisy mod's crazy run, Dean Hall and his team realised that they could do better, but Armour 2's engine was holding them back and they were not able to fulfil their dream game. Bohemia Interactive, the studio behind Armour 2, picked Dean and his team to create their own standalone version of DayZ, which will be running on a new engine that is much easier to work with than Armour 2's engine. It took a long time for standalone to really take off and reach its full potential. Upon DayZ standalone's successful release, another studio wanted in on the genre's hype, so they began working on H1Z1. When it was announced, it was essentially another DayZ clone being developed by a large studio called Daybreak Games, who were known at the time for Planetside 2. It wasn't really anything special, but I'm sure people were welcoming the game as it could have been a really refreshing take on the genre as the game had much cleaner and responsive controls than DayZ, as DayZ was known for horrible controls. When H1Z1 released, people didn't really care for the survival mode, in fact it was actually their own battle royale mode. And guess who was behind it? None other than the man himself, Player Unknown. Daybreak saw Player Unknown's potential and decided to pick him up as one of the developers for the battle royale mode. H1Z1 Battle Royale went on to become one of the biggest Battle Royale games ever made. It may not be popular now, but H1Z1's influence was ridiculous, and it went on to inspire many future Battle Royale titles. And this all stemmed from a small mod on DayZ. DayZ Standalone has been out for over 10 years now, and it's still one of the most played games on Steam. After all these years, DayZ is still one of the most dominant titles in the genre, going head to head with Rust in player count. A decade old rivalry no one probably expected. Over the last 10 years or so, many other games came out that were like Daisy, but never really reached the success that Daisy achieved. Now that I've summed up Daisy's story, it's time to talk about one of the biggest genres in gaming history. A genre that probably would not have existed if it wasn't for Daisy's success. During the peak of H1Z1's success, Brendan Green left Daybreak Studios to pursue his own dream, as he was not satisfied with H1Z1's take on the Battle Royale genre. Blue Hole Studios saw Brendan's work and success with the genre over the years and they realised that this was the guy. They contacted Brendan and asked him if he would be interested in creating a new battle royale game under their studio and of course he said yes, which went on to being a life changing decision for Brendan. They began creating the game Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, also known as PUBG, which went on to being one of the most successful PC games ever made and a genre defying game. When PUBG launched, it sold 1 million copies in 16 days. Till this day, I personally think when PUBG first launched, it was one of the most fun games that I have ever played. It wasn't perfect, it did have its issues. But Brendan Green created this battle royale game that felt like one big sandbox and the game didn't take itself too seriously. I mean, there was a pan that could literally block bullets. PUBG solidified itself as one of the greatest battle royale games at the time and people were loving it. H1Z1 and PUBG were starting to become the two most popular games on Steam at one point and the battle royale genre took the world by storm. Over the years since PUBG's release, we started to see more battle royale games come out and try and replicate the success of PUBG. Some were good, 
some were bad. The most successful games to ever come out after PUBG were games like Fortnite and Apex Legends, each having their own twist on the genre, and that's why they were so successful. And all of these crazy games and events stemmed from one single mod over 10 years ago. Till this day, I genuinely believe that Daisy mod is one of, if not, the most influential games ever made. Frankie's massive Daisy series is probably the reason why a lot of people bought their own PC and started their own journey and stories with Daisy and YouTube. If it wasn't for Daisy, Brendan Green wouldn't have made his Battle Royale mod. If it wasn't for Daisy, then games like Rust or H1Z1 probably wouldn't have existed. If it wasn't for Brendan Green's Battle Royale vision that stemmed from Daisy, then H1Z1's Battle Royale mode probably wouldn't have been possible. And lastly, if it wasn't for H1Z1's massive success, then the creation of PUBG and all of the following Battle Royale games wouldn't have happened. Fortnite would not exist. Apex Legends would not exist. Warzone would not exist. All of this was possible because of Daisy. There are only a few people we have to thank in this story.